up everyone, it's the Law School Lumberjack. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are going to do a new installment of our Property Law 101 series. And today we are going to be talking about the difference between chattels and fixtures, as well as the legal test to differentiate the two. So let's go through a brief background on chattels and fixtures and what the two are. So a chattel is essentially personal property. In property law, there's a very big difference between personal property and real property. So personal property are things that don't involve land, right, or interest in land, and real property generally are things that involve land or interest in land. Most people, you know, when they think of real property, they think of houses, but where everything starts off really is at the, at the dirt or in the plot of land itself. So the plot of land itself, there's certain rights associated with that land, and then the common law and a lot of statutory law states that any buildings that are built on that land and any improvements to the buildings and any fixtures then have those rights that are based on the ground itself transferred into the building, the improvements and fixtures, and also any charges on that land or any encumbrances on that land get transferred to the buildings, uh, improvements and fixtures as well. So. That's why it's very important a lot of times to distinguish whether a, the, an item is a chattel or a fixture. Now, what a fixture is, is it's usually an item that is affixed to the land. A good example of a fixture is uh, you know, a kitchen cabinet. But as a bit of an aside, at one point, those cabinets, before they were built, were actually chattels, right? They were pieces of wood and a piece of metal for the door handle that then once they got attached to the land, became a fixture and became a fix to the land. So the big question in law school exams is, well, okay, how do I determine what is a fixture and what is a chattel? Certain things are clearly fixtures like uh, cabinets, right? And certain things are ch clearly chattels, like for example, a freestanding TV that's not bolted into the wall at all. So what makes things difficult on a law school exam is when you have a chattel that's attached to the land in some way, but it's not clear whether or not that item became a fixture. So the test to determine whether something is a chattel or a fixture is basically a two part test. The first is the degree of affixation. So how affixed is it to the land? So a good example of this is the same item attached in two different ways to the house. So let's say you have a portable air conditioner, you know, one of those ones that you plug in and it sucks air outside from outside and brings it in compared to a built in air conditioner that's completely affixed to the home. So clearly the portable air conditioner is more likely to be a chattel than the air conditioner that's actually built into the house itself. So the second part of the test is what is the object of the annexation? The object of annexation basically is an objective test where you ask, was the purpose of affixing this item to the land, was the purpose of that to benefit the item or to make the land more usable or the property more usable? The good example is a mirror, right? If you've got a mirror and in order to use it or in order to see yourself in the mirror, you need to bolt it to the wall, then maybe the object of annexation wasn't to benefit the land. You just needed to bolt it to the wall because you couldn't see yourself, right? Comparatively, if there's an item that you actually had to put in the land to benefit the land, let's say like in the case of La Salle Recreation, carpet that needed to be actually put on the ground itself and affixed to the ground in order to benefit the land, then it is more likely that that is going to be a fixture. So applying this test on a law school exam isn't overly difficult. You basically state the test, look at the relevant facts, see how affixed the, the item is to the land and how what the reason for the affixation is. But what's really important on a law school exam is kind of the outcome. And a lot of law professors will consider, you know, will put a lot of emphasis on what is the outcome of whether or not it's a fixture or a chattel and why is it important. So let me give you one instance where this is very relevant and which shows up, could show up in your law school exam. But for example, if I was a law school professor and I was trying to test someone on fixtures and chattels, this would be a way I would test them. So let's say you have a contract of purchase and sale to purchase the land and the contract states that you know the fixtures are included in the land but the chattels are not it's your job on a law school fact pattern then to look at you know the degree of affixation the object of affixation for each of the items and then determine whether or not the item is a fixture or a chattel now you take it one step further and you say okay if it's a fixture it's then sold based on the contract of purchase and sale for the property. 
But if it's a chattel, the actual seller or the owner of the property can take those chattels with him once the uh, property is sold because they're not sold in the deal. So that's one way to take this uh, fixture and chattel analysis one step further. And that's one thing you might see on a law school exam that's a bit out of the ordinary is, you know, actually beyond just applying whether or not something is a fixture or a chattel, figuring out the legal effect of that determination. I hope this was helpful. If it is, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Take care. See you next time.